Welcome back to Modern Tactical Shooting. Now, this video is based off of your demand after my soft mod block one and block two history of use with special forces videos. I got a lot of requests to do a Mark 18 and history of it with special forces video. So we're gonna do it right here in this video, cover this bad boy. Now, of course, this is not a true Mark 18. This is an SBR tax stamp lower, but this is a Daniel Defense 10.3 CQBR upper, the commercial version. I'll be using this as reference in this video. I'm going to cover the history of the Mark 18, both the Mod 0 and Mod 1. And I'm gonna try and answer why it was the preferred setup in Afghanistan, despite the fact that ballistically on paper, it did not make the best sense, but we're gonna get into that. So without further ado, let's get into history of the Mark 18 with special forces right now. Now, according to Wikipedia, the CQBR program started in 2000 and it was a Navy initiative. I had to look it up because special forces would not see the LMT Mod Zero CQBR upper till about 2004. The Navy SEALs had it before us, so they kicked off the program. And normal special forces ODAs did not get issued the LMT uh, upper at all during the yearly, early years in Iraq. It actually only went to units called the SIF, Commander's Interdiction Force. Every special forces group has a company of special forces soldiers where their main mission is hostage rescue and close quarter battle. They got the LMT 10.3 uppers with that front sight post. Uh, normal special forces teams did not get uh, the CQBR uppers at all. I did not see one my entire time during my three tours in Iraq ending in 2005. In fact, I did not see a Mark 18 Mod 1, uh, just like this upper here. I did not get issued one of these till 2011, but I'll get into that here in a little bit. Now going back to the early years in Iraq with the SIF members that were issued that LMT upper. Now here are some pictures of Travis Rolfe's setup, a warrant officer that served in the SIF. He would of course later go on and start Mayflower, which is a great gear company. It falls under Velocity Systems now, which he is still with to this day. Again, Travis Rolfe, great special forces guy. Uh, I learned a lot from him during my time in 5th Special Forces Group. Very switched on individual. But again, we did not have that uh, LMT upper. And actually, there was a real requirement for it. Not so much for CQB, but because during our time in Iraq, a lot of special forces teams, our job was to collect intelligence on the enemy. And I'm not going to get into it on YouTube exactly how we did it. But basically, we kind of operated like your narco cops. Instead of looking for drug dealers, we were looking for terrorist cells. And that required us to be in civilian clothes, drive in civilian cars, uh, kind of blend in with the population. And the M4A1 with that 14 and a half inch barrel, even stock collapsed, was too big to conceal in cars. So we rolled with MP5s. Uh, nine mil is not the best cartridge to be running as a primary in a combat zone, but the MP5, you know, full size MP5 with the stock collapsed is shorter than a M4A1. I'm going to do a separate video on the MP5 sometime here in the future, but is because of that, we rolled with MP5s because the M4A1 was too long. And we all wished we had access to those Mod Zero uppers. That way we could have rolled with a much more compact rifle. Not so much again for CQB, but because we had that, you know, I'll call it undercover requirement where we were wearing civilian clothes and trying to blend in with the civilian population. Again, I'll cover that in a separate video I plan on doing on the MP5 and its history of use with special forces sometime here in the near future. Now I'll admit I do not have much experience with the Mod Zero, the CQBR LMT upper, but I do have extensive experience with the Mod 1, the Daniel Defense CQBR upper, paired with the Colt lower, that's what makes it a Mark 18. Now I did not see the Mod 1 start being issued to around 2010 in Special Forces. I did not get issued a Mod 1 till about 2011 on the team I was assigned to. I did use this for a, a tour in Afghanistan, which I'll get into here in a little bit. But right now, let me talk about the performance of the Mark 18 and just why it was so popular with Special Forces. Now, before I talk about performance, real quick, the big difference between the Mod Zero and the Mod One when it comes to being issued, the Mod Zero, of course, was limited to special teams, 
those SIF companies, but when the Mod 1 was issued to Special Forces, every Special Forces member serving on an ODA got one issued. So we had two uppers. We had our Mark 18, Daniel Defense upper in 10.3, and we had our 14 and a half inch regular Colt upper. So most guys would rig up their primary optics on the primary upper that they wanted to run. And in which case, in a lot of instances, it was the Mark 18. So a 10.3 barrel shooting M855, later M855A1, Mark 262, 77 grain, whatever form of 556 uh, we had issued, people will say, well, it's pretty anemic past really three or 400 yards. Why were these so popular to run in Afghanistan? And really the key word is balance. The Mark 18 paired with that Surefire SOCOM suppressor is a dream to shoot and it's perfectly balanced. It's not too long or front heavy when you put a suppressor on here. Now, of course, this is not the uh, flash hider that came issued on our guns. It was a Surefire four prong, just like I have on my clone right here of my work gun from my last tour. But uh, the balance and the reduced muzzle signature, reduced, reduced flash made the Mark 18 a dream to shoot and a dream to carry. And I spoke about this in a few videos. My last video I did on the XM5 where I critiqued it. And I talk about it in some of my defense review articles. Talking about how the rifle, the carbine, and whatever form it is, it's a PDW. It's what you have on hand to engage the threat when a firefight breaks out. But as the fight develops, you bring the proper weapon systems to bear on the enemy. And a good example of this, this picture right here, I'm in the Momon Valley in 2014, rocking a Mark 18. About 20 minutes after this photo was taken, we were engaged by a PKM and a few insurgents, literally on a mountainside, just over 500 yards away. I think I fired three rounds on my Mark 18. As I was running back to the truck, once I got back to our RGs and our MATVs, I sat there on the radio and I directed heavy machine gun fire in the form of 50 cal machine guns and 60 millimeter mortar rounds in handheld mode onto that fighting position. And we reduced it, is the military term. We took out that fighting position, I think, in five minutes. So yes, I could have sat there and plugged away with my Mark 18. I had a Elkan Spectre one to four on it at the time. And you know, maybe after a few hits and getting my range, I could effectively engage that position. But why give the enemy all that time to shoot at me when I can bring the proper weapons to bear? Now, of course, this shines in CQB when you're clearing out those villages in Afghanistan. The enemy still likes to fight at distance, but a Mark 18 is a 300 meter gun easy, and you can stretch out hits to four, even 500 yards. Many will argue you're not doing much damage at four or 500 yards with 556, five, but I can tell you firsthand, if you, you know, stick the enemy with a 556 five, in their chest, even at distance, they're not gonna fight long when they have a piece of metal, say, stuck in their lung or something. Uh, it just doesn't happen and they will eventually go away. And when you have distance, when you're engaging the enemy uh, and you make them go away, you've effectively you know, taken care of that enemy when they stop shooting at you. And again, you can always close in on them and then kill them when they're in the proper effective range of this carbine. But that's how this gun was utilized. I'd like to announce a new sponsor of my channel, and that is AT Armor. They offer some great soft and hard armor options, all different price points. I have a set of their HESCO M210 Special Threat Plates. These stop all forms of 7.62x39, all the way up to 5.56M855A1. So a good balance of protection. And more importantly, these are greatly priced. Uh, I wouldn't get on here and recommend $1,000 plates to somebody. I would only recommend plates that I would want to purchase, and these are definitely right there. Again, M210 Special Threat Plates. They weigh about five pounds, and more importantly, they're half the thickness of some conventional plates that I own and some that I borrowed. If we check out this close-up right here, I have a military sappy plate. Uh, it's almost half the thickness of that, and it's truly half the thickness of my old level threes that I've been wearing. 
So there'll be a link down in the description for AT Armor. Again, they offer all different price points and levels of armor to fit your needs. I'm happy to partner up with them. AT Armor, the Mark 18, again, it, it's a dream to carry and shoot. Very well balanced with that suppressor and the suppressor reduces the muzzle signature, reduces the, the felt recoil. And that's why the Mark 18 is so popular. It's probably the most popular setup used by special forces during our time in Afghanistan. Because again, it shines at CQB and when you're engaging the enemy, double taps have long been a thing of the past. We learned early on in Iraq, you give the enemy P for plenty when you're engaging them. So in training, we practice five round strings, but in real life, put your sights or your dot on the enemy and you drive them down with a large string of fire. Again, P for plenty. So. If your unit uh, is still training on double taps, we know it's not that effective in 5.56. Yes, I have seen one-shot stops with 5.56. You get heart, you get spine, you get head, the enemy's going down. But when in doubt, drive the threat down to the, to, to the ground, and the Mark 18 works perfectly well for that. Now let me cover how the Mark 18 was rigged in Afghanistan. And I've said this before, the most popular optic used by Special Forces is that Elkan Spectre 104 variable power optic paired with a Mark 18. Sure, this is still only a three or 400 meter gun, but with magnification allows you to spot the enemy. And again, direct better weapons against the enemy. One of my favorite accessories mounted on my carbine is this item right here. This is an Arredondo extended magazine well. I get a lot of questions in my videos exactly what this is. It's just basically a clamp-on extended magazine funnel. This is the older version. I had to take some plastic out inside of it so it will work with Magpul P-Mags. But I think people have said the modern version of the Arredondo magazine well will take any magazine. And really what this allows for is a no-miss reload with the carbine. Uh, and yes, people can say, well, you can just train so you don't miss the mag well. Well, it's kind of hard to do, especially if you're running at night with nods on. I don't like to take my eyes off wherever I'm going or wherever the enemy might be to perform a reload or attack reload with this Arredondo Extended Magazine well. Again, it's a no-miss reload. You can just feel for it. It pops right in. Yes, it looks kind of goofy on here, but the practicality of it really can't be beaten and it should not be overlooked as an item. Uh, probably one of the most favorite accessories to mount on the carbine. Uh, another item gets a lot of questions is this extended bolt handle right here. This is from a Boonie Packer Ready Mag, uh, that double magazine kit. The extended bolt handle allows me to slap the side instead of feeling for the bolt catch to let the bolt go forward. They don't make these anymore, but I've talked about this in other videos. All right, this picture right here, that device on the front of the Mark 18, and I have one right here. This is a Fur France CRD, or Concussion Reduction Device. It goes over the Fur France muzzle brake. Now, muzzle brakes aren't really a popular item on duty rifles. Sure, they help control recoil. This is one of my three gun rifles. It makes the gun super, uh, super smooth shooting, uh, very flat, but the excessive gas and muzzle blast Really, you can't be shooting these in close quarters of other people. In the early 2000s, you might see some photos of some SF guys trying out some muzzle brakes. And I played with one on my Mark 18 in 2014 with this CRD uh, just to see how it was. Uh, really, this is not fit for combat, but I played around with one and I ran a muzzle brake uh, on a few outings. But really, ever since the adoption of that Surefire SOCOM suppressor, that's made any muzzle brake obsolete. That Surefire SOCOM suppressor keeps the gun super flat. And again, really the advantage is not really to protect your hearing. Of course, you get that when you run suppressed. But when you get in a good concealed position, especially in Afghanistan, uh, it's, it's awesome knowing that when you're engaging the enemy, running suppressed, they have no idea where you're at because you're not creating a muzzle signature, very reduced sound, especially when you're engaging enemy positions at distance. They truly have no clue where you're at. So running suppressed is the new norm. It's been the norm ever since Softmod Block 2 came out. Just like one of the other news norms 
is running a gun with dual optics, that LPVO and an offset red dot. I've got it over to the shoulder behind me. Again, I ran one in 2015. That's a clone of my work gun. Uh, that's the new standard and running suppressed has been the standard and really all combat units need to be running suppressed. Shooter stand by. <laughs> Stand by. One five zero, please. Shooter, stand by. One forty seven, please. I got six rounds in. Damn. That's All right, let's talk about limitations or things I don't like about the Mark eighteen. Really, there's only one, and that has to do with the cyclic rate on full auto. Even with the M4A1, the cyclic rate is way too high. It's way too fast, and that's what makes running full auto really kind of not practical beyond 50 yards. And the Army shies away from training in full auto, even the Special Forces, very little formal training in full auto, which I think is actually doing a disservice to our fighting men and women. Because in combat, there are times where you're going to need full auto, especially if you're trying to suppress enemy fire and the cyclic rate is way too high. Running suppressed does help settle that gun, so it makes full auto a little bit more practical. But if the cyclic rate was honestly cut in half, you could really be working some wonders running full auto and doing short control bursts. We spend a lot of time uh, training on double taps and shooting... Uh, large strings of fire in semi-auto. Just imagine if we had a gun in full auto where the cyclic rate was really turned down, allowing the gun to be super controllable. Then you could be doing three and four round bursts and keeping it in the kill zone at some pretty good ranges. So the cyclic rate is too high, especially when you throw a suppressor on there, that extra gas bumps up the cyclic rate. And when these barrels start to wear out from high round count shooting, you get gas port erosion, allowing more gas into the gun. And these guns just start running hotter and hotter, especially M855A1, you're turning up the gas even more. I think there's a good argument to have adjustable gas on your military guns, but I don't think the Army will ever do it. But uh, that's one argument is barrel erosion starts increasing the gas pressures in your gun. Uh, so again, there could be an argument for adjustable gas in guns. So when they start eroding, you can dial them back down. But cyclic rate. Now the 10.3 inch barrel, of course, is a limiting factor for range. But again, you work through that with engaging the enemy with the correct weapon systems. And again, close quarter battle and really anything 300 yards and under. The Mark 18 is perfectly suitable for that. So there it is, a quick history of the Mark 18 and why it was so preferred by special forces in Afghanistan. Again, the key is balance. This is such a well-balanced platform when paired with a Surefire SOCOM suppressor. Now, I retired at the very end of 2016. In 2017, of course, SOCOM started to adopt the upper receiver group improved, which is all Geisley. And also, they started to phase out the Daniel Defense Mark 18 Mod 1s, I believe, around 2019, being replaced with the Geisley Super Duty Uppers, all Geisley, and it comes with an 11.5-inch barrel. So the time or the era of the Daniel Defense Mark 18 seems to be coming to an end. It's always going to have a special place in my heart because, again, such a great gun to shoot. But there it is, history of the Mark 18 and Special Forces. As always, hopefully this video was informative and entertaining. Stay tuned for future videos. Again, I'll be doing a history of the MP5 and Special Forces sometime in the future. But as always, I'm Jeff Gerwich. Thanks for watching.